got if everybody can stand for the reading we're going to do a uh, lamentations 3 verse 25 through 26 Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul who seeks him. It is good that one should hope and wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. Give honor and praise of God's word. Let's pray. Father God, Lord, we just thank you. Father God, we come to you praising you, Father God, for another day that we get to rejoice and be glad in it, Father God. Lord, we thank you for another day to get it right, Father God. We thank you for loving us, Father God, despite who we are, Father God. We thank you for sending your son to die on a cross for us, Father God. Lord, we pray that today, Father God, lives would be changed, Lord Jesus. I pray that you would just fill this place, Father God, that you would hit people right where they are, Father God. Lord, you told us to come as we are, Father God. And Lord, and I pray that people would come as they are, but they would leave different, Father God. I pray, Lord, that if there's something on someone's heart, Father God, that they would leave it at the cross today, Father God. I pray, Lord, that if somebody here that does not know you, Father God, I pray, Lord, they would come to know you today, Father God. I pray, Lord, that you would be with our speaker today, Lord Jesus, that you would touch him, Father God, and use him mightily today, Father God. I pray, Lord, that your words would be said through his lips, Father God. And Lord, Father God, I pray that um, as those words are said, Father God, that it would pierce right through to the heart, Father God, that people's hearts, Father God, would be changed today, Lord Jesus. I pray, Father God, that you would continue to use living, uh, living grace, Father God, as, as a beacon, Father God, of hope in this community, Father God, as a beacon to pull people in, Father God, that the lost people would come to know you, Father God, in this community by using the people here today, Father God. I pray for those who are on the way right now, Father God, that you provide safety for them, Father God. I pray for those who are traveling this weekend, Lord, that you provide safety for them, Lord Jesus. We pray, Father God, for those who are watching online right now, that you would bless them right where they are, Father God. We pray for healing today, Father God, for those who need healing, Father God. We pray for a financial blessing for those who are needing it right now, Father God. We pray for those who are needing a job, Father God, that you provide that job for them, Father God. I pray, Lord, that you would bless people who are having issues in the marriage, Lord. We pray for marriages right now, Father God, that you would help in reconnecting that fire, Father God, in their hearts, Lord Jesus. We pray for your children today, Father God, for our future, Lord. We pray that you would bless them and help them to see and know, Father God, who you are, Father God, and it would be in their hearts, Father God. It would never depart from them, Father God. Lord, we just thank you and praise you for just continuing to show your grace and mercy upon us, even though we're not worthy of it, Father God. Lord, we thank you and praise you, and it's in your precious and most holy name that we all said, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Y'all ready to praise the Lord this morning? I want you to look at the person next to you. I'm ready to praise the Lord. I need y'all to say with some excitement, say, I'm ready to praise the Lord. Let's go. Amen. Amen. There is power, power, wonder working power in the blood. There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you are evil of victory? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder working in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder working in the precious blood of the Lamb. Let's sing that again. There is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. I say, look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. He healed my body. He touched my mind. He saved me just in time. Oh, I'm gonna praise His name. He gave me just the same. Come on and praise Him. Look what the Lord has done. Come on. 
I said, look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. He healed my body. He touched my mind. He saved me just in time. Oh, I'm going to praise his name. Each day is just the same. Come on and praise him. Come what the Lord has done. I said, can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like Lord. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. He's my friend. Hey, he healed my body. Tell me to run. Heal my body. Tell me to run, heal my body. Tell me to run, he's my friend. Say, can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like Lord. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. He's my friend. Say, he heal my body. Tell me to run, heal my body. Tell me to run, heal my body. Tell me to run, he's my friend. Oh, yes. Let's praise him this morning, amen. Let's praise him this morning, amen. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning, church. Good morning. Thank you, Christian and Kiana. Amen. Healed my body, told me to run on. Amen? Amen. 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 How many times has he healed your body? Amen. How many times have you seen him? Have you seen him perform miracles? Amen. Amen. Ivy's raising her hand. Amy. And when I look at Ivy, I think about do we remember that Ivy was blind? Does anybody remember that Ivy couldn't drive? Does anybody remember that? Do you remember that, Sam? Do you remember Ivy used to not be able to do anything? She had to rely on somebody to drive her everywhere she went. And um, she had a risky surgery that we didn't know what was going to happen. And then, then we can say there was a blind lady named Ivy. And now Ivy can see. Amen? Amen. There is a miracles. Amen. Our God is performing miracles. He does perform miracles, amen? He does perform miracles, and I look out around the congregation, I know that he is a God that hears our prayers, amen? Heals our body, tells us to run on, amen? Can't nobody do you like Jesus, amen? Can't nobody do you like Jesus? Can't nobody substitute like Jesus, amen? There's nobody that you can go to. There's nobody that you can take all your burdens to. There's nobody that you can absolutely bear your whole soul and show everything that you've ever done to, except for Jesus. And he loves you so much, amen? Today we wanna just focus on how much God loves you. How much God loves you. How much God loves you. I'm, I'm telling you, this world beats us up. Yes, Manta said this much. Amen, this much. He loved you this much that he stretched his hands out on Calvary, amen, and sacrificed his life, amen. He sacrificed his life for us. We can't even wrap our mind around that kind of love, amen, but I know what it's easy to feel is not love. Anybody ever feel not loved, amen? Anybody have somebody who should have loved you turn their back on you? Anybody have somebody who should have been there, it wasn't there? Amen, we know what that feels like, and every day that we go out, into this world. This world will beat us up and some of us will believe or hear the lie that you're not loved. Amen. So nobody can walk out of here today believing that you're not loved. You are loved so much. God loves you so much. I had a conversation with someone last night and she said, what if he doesn't love me? What if I'm not good enough? And this is one of our members. This is one of our members who hasn't been here for a while. And she said, what if I'm just evil? I said, you are, you are evil. You are evil. You're a sinner. You're a sinner and so am I. But God loves you and you accepted him. So stop. Stop believing those lies. Stop thinking about what you're not and remember who he is. 
amen, who he is, who God is. We're never going to measure up, amen, and he didn't require us to measure up. That's what this was about. That's what this was about, amen, that's stretching out his arms. And you know what? He said, it is finished. Stop tormenting my people. Stop messing with my people. Stop making my people feel guilty. Stop telling my people they're not enough. Stop telling my people they're not loved, amen. It is finished. It is finished. Amen. It is finished. It is finished. Amen. It is finished. So we got to remember the battle has already been won. Amen. So we don't want to walk around not in victory. We want to walk around in victory knowing who God is, knowing who God is and that we're adopted into the family. Amen. We're adopted by the King of Kings, Lord of Lords. Amen. You are in the family. And you know what that means? Nothing can separate you from the love of God. You are adopted in. You are in the fold. You are in the fold. Amen. And so I just want you to know if you are, came in here feeling down, feeling kicked, feeling unloved, you walk out of here knowing how much you are loved. Amen. Amen. So welcome to Living Grace. Do we have any first-time visitors today? Any first-time visitors? Amen. So Carlton is coming around giving um, first-time visitor gifts out to our visitors because um, we want you to know that it's really, really, really important to us that you spent today with us. You didn't have to go anywhere. You could have stayed home. You didn't have to come here. But on this day, you're here with us. Amen. And so I want you to know one thing. You've already been prayed for. Amen. You were already prayed for before you walked in the door today. Amen. Um, so we don't know if this will be your first Sunday, your first of 1,000 Sundays. We just don't know. But we do know that we want you to feel welcomed and loved here. Amen. Amen. Welcomed and loved here. Amen. Um, th that's what we do here. We love God and we love people. We love God and we love people. Amen. And what I always say is when we mess that up, we start back over at the top. Amen. Love God, love people. And somehow some of those two steps... Sometimes we mess them up, right? We go back to loving God, and out of that love for God, we can love people, his Amen. people. Amen? So we love God, we love people. So first-time visitors, thank you. Thank you for coming to Living Grace today. Amen? And we just hope that you meet God here. He's here. Don't walk out the same. Spend some time in his presence. Know that you are loved, and know that whatever you have to do at 12 o'clock today, 1230 when we get out of here, can we just put that out of our mind? Right. Can we just focus on where we are right now in the presence of God at church to give him praise? Amen. That's what we came here to do. Amen. And I don't know about you, but I got things I got to do later. Amen. I got things I got to do later. But at this appointed time, let's just come together in his presence. Amen. And get filled up. Because when we go out of here, guess what's waiting on us? That world, that to-do list, all of those things we got to do. But right now we can be safe and built up. Amen. Built up during this hour and a half. Amen. Be built up. Get what God has for you so that you can go out there. Amen. Um, on today, let's see what we've got. Prayer. Um, prayer at 630. Thanks, Desi. Um, prayer at 630 tonight. Um, prayer every night at 630. Amen. Every night at 630 except Monday and Wednesdays. Amen. 630. Do like I do. Um, set an alarm. You guys know last night, Pastor and I were in Walmart, in different sections of Walmart, and we um, we set that alarm and we dial in. Amen. So 7 o'clock, or 6, 6, <laughs> 6 30, 6.30, every evening, 6.30. Amen. Every Tuesday morning at 7 o'clock, we do the same thing. So if you don't have that prayer line, put that prayer line in your phone, 701-791. 9076. 701 791. 7096? Yeah, 9076. 9076. So put that in there, and, um, and that's a number that you're um, welcome to share um, with family members, with friends, anybody that wants to call in and get prayer. Um, I was thinking this morning when I was getting ready, I wonder if people are getting burned out on 630 prayer wonder if they're getting tired of it. You know, amen. 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 Well, and I was thinking, 
I was thinking about that and thinking, how could we ever get enough prayer? How could we get enough? Amen? How can, our, our church in Denver, I'm Living Hope, they started at the beginning of the pandemic praying every morning and every night. Um, they pray in the morning, they pray in the evening. And, um, and I asked one of their members, I'm like, how is that going? And they said, just the old people do it. And um, <laughs> I was cracking up. I, yeah, I don't know what age that was. I didn't ask because I was scared to hear what it was. But, um, <laughs> but um, it's, a, it's a time to connect, amen? It's a time to reconnect with one another. And every single day, there's things to praise him about. Every single day, there's things to pray about, amen? So again, put that phone number in your phone. Um, and maybe you don't regularly use it, but on the days that you really need it, it's there. We're praying, amen? And and there's some people that, you know, there used to be a prayer line that you could call like a 1-800 prayer line, and I think it's still available like 24 hours a day, but there's nothing better than praying with your brothers and sisters in Christ, amen? So so that's the number. Um, feel free to share it and use it, amen? All right. Also, uh, Monday nights, we are on Zoom. And we are doing um, women's Bible study and men's Bible study. Uh, we started in the book of Second. We did First John. We did Second John last Monday. This Monday we'll be in the book of Third John. Um, and then we're our plans are to go into the book of Hebrews. Amen. And so if you can, ladies, that plan to get on on Monday night, read the book of Third John. It's really short. Um, it's not even worthy of a letter. It's like a postcard. Amen. It's a short, short message. Very, very power packed. So third John is what we'll be talking about tomorrow night at 7 p.m. Amen. Also, the men are in the book of Philippians, and that is also tomorrow night at 7 p.m. So 7 p.m. for the men, 7 p.m. for the ladies, um, third John and, seven, and the book of Philippians. Amen. All right, and Wednesday night Zoom is our Bible study, and we started in the book of Revelations, and I can publicly admit that I didn't want to start in the book of Revelations, and I thought I spoke for all of you when I thought you didn't want to either, and um, everybody got on and said, oh, this is great, we wanted to do this. So, <laughs> Pastor, um, you were right, you were right. You were right. <laughs> you were right. Amen. So, first time in 31 years. 31. See? So, book, book of Revelations um, is, we started on Monday. We only got through chapter 1, right? So, it's not too late. Um, and so, that's what's happening on Wednesday nights on Zoom. So, the book of Revelation and um, 6.30 on Wednesday nights. Amen? All right. Media walkthrough is this Saturday, March 27th. So that's for um, at 11 o'clock. That's our sound people, our media team, um, sound media, easy worship. Um, anybody that's interested in that ministry, please come out on um, Saturday at 11 o'clock. Those of you that are in it, um, also come. We want to just build that team of folks that um, there's, there's nothing worse than having one person who knows how to do something. And then when that one person can't be there, the show stops, amen? And we're never going to let the show stop, amen? And so we want to just train up people to be able to do all of the things that we do to, to run our service, amen? And to also let people watch our service who are not in Great Falls or who are homesick and want to watch our service, amen? So if you're interested, you have that skill, you have that gift, or you'd like to learn more about it, amen? Um, we are all, our whole sound and worship media team is self-taught. So we're all self-taught, amen? So no experts in this group. So if you feel like, oh man, I don't know if I can know how to do this stuff. I'm not a techie, I'm not a computer person. Come on out because we are self-taught and um, you can be a blessing, amen? All right, also, Let's see, Good Friday service, April 2nd at 7 p.m. So Good Friday, um, is that, it's coming soon, two weeks? Two weeks. So our Good Friday service is April 2nd, 7 p.m. Plan on coming out. Um, it's a Friday evening, it's Good Friday, um, and we are going to do a presentation, um, a dramatization um, of a funeral for Jesus. Amen, and so come on out. Um, 
we know Sunday's coming, Resurrection Sunday is coming, amen, but on that Friday night, we come and we um, behold the cross, and we behold what happened at the cross, amen? So Friday, good service, 7 p.m., good service. Good Friday service will be a good service. How's that? Good Friday service will be a good service, 7 p.m. on Friday, April 2nd. Amen? All right, Living Grace, single parents, we love you. We love you, single parents. Um, you know, um, we want to recognize, you know, the family is designed to have a husband and a wife. Um, that's God's design for families, amen? Um, and sometimes life circumstances happen and things don't um, end up um, working that way. And so on today, we want to recognize, um, we want to recognize some of the women in our church, um, some of the parents in our church, and uh, we just want to really follow the Holy Spirit's leading um, in this. Um, these beautiful um, flower arrangements were uh, made and actually um, donated um, by Chris. Um, and I just want to thank you, Chris, for joining us today. Amen. And so we're just going to take a minute out to do something um, and follow the Lord's leading. Amen. And so um, first and foremost, um, Adrian. Uh, we want to recognize you, so if you could just come up, please. Amen. And Adrian, you can pick one of those gifts, and I just want to have you just look at your church family and know that um, Adrian came to us um, after my mother-in-law um, passed, and she came to Montana with a couple suitcases and a couple of kids. Um, Gary and Jazan, um, um, her sons, and and she came here and starting a new life, a new life in Montana, a new life without her mama, um, a new life um, having a church family who just showed up at her apartment that was empty, amen, Londa, showed up at her apartment that was empty and kept coming with microwaves and furniture and tables and dishes, and she's like, I don't have money to pay these people, and we said, that's not what we do. That's Amen. not what we do. Amen. These people just love you. Amen. They just love you. Amen. And so um, she has been, as you guys know, every 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 step of the journey, been praising God, has been faithful to the praise team, Amen. has been faithful to serving in this church, um, and is doing her absolute best to raise two young men um, on her own. So her, her son's Jazan and her son's Gary. And so we just want to honor you today, Londa, and say we love you. We got your back. Amen. This whole church family has your back. Amen. Sister Monta to come forward. Um, Sister Monta. Amen. And Sister Monta has been with us from the beginning. Amen. Um, she's been with us from the beginning. She actually um, helped us start our start Living Word Church in the basement of our house. Amen. And um, and we went through her losing her husband. Uh, we went through that really, really rough time, and she um, had to continue raising kids and raising um, grandkids and um, be sort of the matriarch of our church. And, um, and so we just want to honor your commitment to God and your commitment to us, and um, we just want to say thank you so much. Amen. 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 Would you, can you make it up here or do you want me to come to you? 
know granny granny is the matriarch of um, Jim's family amen and she has um, been enduring she's the glue that's keeping that family together amen kids grandkids um, and she um, she is a widow who is doing life by herself now amen and with this church family and taking care of all of us so we just honor you today amen amen <laughs> She has been, she has been a, a rock through this. And you guys know, any of you who have lost a parent knows that um, that there's midnight hour cries. There's times that you're going through, and you have been um, so strong, Michelle. You trusting God and doing that before us, and doing that before um, your sisters in Christ, and also just praying diligently for salvation for her husband, salvation for her family members. You have been doing it, and you've been stronger than you know that you've been doing it. And we just wanted to recognize you today for what you've been doing, staying the course in all your faith. Amen. <laughs> your love. Um, for those of you who do not know, Lori has spent almost all of 2021 in the hospital. Um, um, she recently had her anniversary with her husband in heaven who's um, gone on. Um, and we just, um, we just love you, Lori. We know it's tough. Um, and we know it's your faith that has gotten you through losing your husband, through all of these health issues. Um, and again, you have been um, a witness of faith to our church. Amen. And we've been praying for you, but we know you pray for us. And so we just want to honor you as you continue to walk on this journey. And remember, you're not alone and that you're loved so much. And um, we just want to give you a little token of our love. Amen. Amen. <laughs> actually is going to go Pastor? oh where you stand did you want it <laughs> um, so I am going to um, present this beautiful flower arrangement made by Chris to Chris to Chris <laughs>
now she's partnering with us um, as far as um, being our, um, our floral arrangement person. Um, but some of you may not know that Chris recently lost her daughter, um, her oldest daughter. And, and again, that's a, that's a hurt. That's a hurt, right, isn't it? It's a hurt that you can't explain. And so um, we just want to thank you um, for being with us today. And we also just want to give that to you from her. Amen to you from her. Amen. Amen. Um, there's that old saying that says, give me my flowers while I'm living. Amen. Give me my flowers. And so I just want to encourage you today, if there's somebody that you just need to show some love to, um, reach out to them and tell them you appreciate them. Show them some love. You see their strength. You see them going through. You see them struggling. Um, let's just do that today. Amen. Let's just keep that going. Amen. Recognizing some people who really just need some love. Amen. And so um, we're just grateful that God just puts it on our heart to do some things that um, take care of each other and take care of his people. Amen. Amen. All right. What else do we have going on? Birthdays and anniversaries. Are we having any birthdays and anniversaries? Whose birthday? Yeah. Kiana's is today. Is that for today? Fifteen. Fifteen. I was trying to keep her fourteen. Fifteen. Amen. Fifteen for Kiana. So, um, Kiana, um, you, you had your skating party yesterday? Today. It's today. It's today. At the church. Oh, nobody's missed it. <laughs> Oh, good. I was spreading a rumor that it was yesterday. <laughs> it's today. Well, praise God. <laughs> I thought I was late. Amen. All right. So, Ke are you coming, Sam? Come on. Oh, come you're on. already coming up. Um, <laughs> all right. So, Kiana's birthday. Who else had a birthday this week? Anybody else have a birthday? Yeah. Hey, how come they're not downstairs? Arden had a birthday on the 23rd. 23rd. Woo -hoo. 24th. You come up? 24th. 24th. You want to come up? Come on. Come cha 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 come with on, me. Come on, Arden. Come on. Arden, come on. Come on, Arden. Where's Carmen? Carmen will get her. Come on, Carmen. Oh, Dad's bringing me up. Oh. All right. Oh, Daddy's coming too. Any other Amen. birthdays? Any other birthdays? My son's birthday is uh, Saturday. Woo. Julian's yeah. birthday is Saturday. He turns 14. 14? <laughs> I already got the gray hair, so yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Come on, everybody. Let's cha cha cha. Anniversary? Any anniversaries this week? Ready, birthday choir? <clears throat> Ready? <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, everybody. Happy birthday to you. And many more. Anniversary. just shared with me that um, she recently was accepted to grad school. Nice. So, awesome. Awesome news, Ivy. Um, 
Let's see. Um, the Thomases are traveling today. They're um, celebrating Sister Thomas's birthday, so keep them in your prayers as they travel. The Rio Vans are in Missoula, heading back. Um, they went to see Tanaya for the weekend, and so they'll be heading back um, this afternoon, so keep them in your prayers. Uh, teacher of the Week, our Morningside Teacher of the Week. Is that you, Dawn? All right, Morningside Teacher of the Week. I'm going to turn you over to um, Dawn so we can pray for our Teacher of the Week. We don't have a Teacher of the Week. We don't have a name. Okay, so we just going to pray for all of them. There you go. Amen. All right. All right, team folks, let's pray. Dear Father, I just want to thank you for this school. I want to thank you for all the teachers that are here. I just want to thank you for that calling that you put on their life, Lord. And I just ask that you would lift them up. I ask that you would just strengthen them. I just ask that you give them wisdom to deal with all the various uh, situations. Uh, because we know life's uh, com complex and it's quite messy and cloudy. And uh, we just ask that you you put a special blessing on them and just pour it out on them, Father. And just give them the, the strength to always encourage and to love and to be a brother. I just thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Can you come up here with me, sir? <laughs> I think we have a couple more announcements. There we go. Um, the nursery is open, so that's a praise. We're Amen. back with having our nursery open. Amen. I think Paulina is our teacher down there today, and Christian is our helper. Is Christian down there? Amen. So we have an adult teacher, and we also have a, um, a teen volunteer as well. Um, praying for Morningside Elementary, and we just did that. And we also have some uh, requests from Morningside Elementary. Um, they need sweatpants, um, little kids size sweatpants, um, girls sweatpants size 4, 5, 5, and 6 and boys sweatpants size eight and up. So um, those are some needs that we can meet for them. Um, so if you're out at the store and you can grab, right now everything's turning to shorts, from sweatpants to shorts, but if you see that there's some little sweatpants out there in kid sizes, that seems to be a request that they always ask me. Amen. Yes. Amen. 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 So our Morningside last day of school event will be handing out ice cream bars and um, sending them off um, to their summer. And uh, we get to do that again this year. So um, if you're interested in being over there, it takes about two hours to go through the whole lunch crew. Um, and if you're interested and would like to help us with that, um, just let Pastor know. Amen. All right, are there any other announcements? No other announcements. All right, then I am going to turn you over to Deacon Fred Sadler. Okay, this is the time that we have for our offering. And uh, Lord God, precious Heavenly Father, we thank you today, Lord God, for all that you provide for us. And Lord God, we'd like to take this time, Lord, to, to give a little bit of that back to you, Lord God. A little bit to put into your storehouse for future times, Lord God, because we know that, that what we have in store right now, Lord God, that you have much in store for us. And Lord, and Lord God, we need the, the funds to do that, so that's where the offerings come from, Lord. And Lord, we know that we're not giving it to any one individual. We're not giving it to any program, Lord God. We are giving all this back to you, Lord, because you're the one that provided it to us in the first place. And we just like to give back to you, Lord God, and we pray that we are able to do well with what you provide to us, Lord God. You know, I pray all this in your holy name. Amen.
So I'm going to ask you guys to stand to your feet as we continue to praise and worship this morning. Amen. Amen. How many of us have some chains that we need to be broken? Amen. How many of us know that God can break those chains? Amen. That it's us who's holding on to those chains. You can't really grab on to God when you're holding on to that chain. Amen. You got to let go. Let God break that from you. Amen. So we're going to be singing some chain breaker this morning. I want you guys to really lift it up. And as we're singing it, make it real to you. Amen. Let's make it real to you. If you've been walking the same old road for miles and miles, if you've been hearing the same old voice to the same old lies, if you're trying to feel the same old holes inside, well, there's a better life. There's a better life. Come on, sing it out. If you got pain, he's a pain taker. Feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom, save it. He's a prison shaking savior. If you got chains, he's a chain breaker. We've all searched for the light of day in the dead of night. We've all found ourselves worn out from the same old fire. We've all run the things we know that just ain't right. But there's a better life. There's a better life. If you got pain, he's a pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom, But he's a chain breaker. If you believe it, if you receive it, if you can feel it, somebody testify. If you believe it, if you receive it, if you can feel it. Somebody testify. Come on, sing it out. If you believe it, if you receive it, if you can feel it, somebody testify. If you got pain, he's a pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom, a savior, he's a pain Shaking Savior, if you got chains, well, he's a chain breaker. If you got pain, he's a pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom or saving, he's a prison shaking Savior, if you got chains. Well, he's a chain breaker. Amen. Let's praise him this morning. Let's praise him this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. You unravel me with a melody. You surround me with a song And of deliverance From my enemies Till all my fears are gone Sing it out And I'm no longer a slave to fear And I am Oh. 
There's a chair that waits for you And a friend who understands Everything you're going through But you keep standing at a distance In the shadow of your shame There's a light of hope that's shining Won't you come and take your place And bring it all to the table There's nothing here Savior, and he calls, bring it all to the table. He can see the weight you carry, the fears that hold your heart. But through the cross, you've been forgiven. You accept it as you are and bring it all to the table. The 
There's nothing he ain't seen before For all your trials, all your worries and your burdens There's a Savior and he calls Bring it all to the table Bring it all Bring it all So come on in, take your place no one who's turned away all you sinners all your saints come right in and find your grace come on in take your place there's no one who's turned away all you sinners all your saints come right in and find your grace and bring it on
There's nothing he has seen before. For all your sin, all your sorrow, and your sadness, there's a Savior, and he goes, bring it all to the table. And bring it all to the table. There's nothing he ain't seen before. For all your sin, all your sorrow, and your sadness, there's a Savior, and he calls, bring it all to the table. And Kiana worshiping together. Amen. Amen. So now the children are released um, for Children's Church. And, um, and speaking of children, one of our big children, one of our big children is Ezra. Ezra, can you raise your hand? So Ezra is... Um, raising money for the Great Falls Chargers baseball team that he is on, that he's trying out for this week, but we already know. We already know. So um, so he's selling cards, and he's raising money. Um, so please, if you said that you wanted to support um, um, Ezra and um, his cards and a chance to win $500 um, shopping spree, please see Ezra. So everyone, Ezra, raise your hand again. Ezra's right here. Um, his mama is watching and saying, you better come home selling some cards, right? So, um, so we want to make sure that Ezra has a house to go to when he goes home today. Amen? All right. And so at this time, um, I want to um, say um, that I get the privilege of, um, Pastor gave me the privilege of introducing um, our speaker of the hour. And, um, and Paul Tyner um, and his wife, Lori Tyner, um, came to us, and we really believe that it was a God-appointed coming to us. Amen. And so um, just ask that you pray for him as he brings the word this morning. Um, Paul, is he has been ministering at the rescue mission for years. Amen. And he has a, a really direct, rough, in-your-face kind of ministry. Amen. That's how we would describe Paul. Amen. And, and God is using him and shaping him and molding him and, and using all of those gifts for the next place that he's going to be in life, amen? And on this day, it's right before you, amen? And so um, we prayed this morning, and Pastor said, I'm not going to pray away your butterflies, I'm not going to pray away your anxiety, because any time you stand before God's people and deliver God's word, there, there should be a reverence for standing in this pulpit, amen? And one thing I can also say about your pastor is he is very, very careful about who he puts in front of you, amen? And so... Um, so this is our first time hearing um, Paul bring the gospel message this morning. So if y'all could just um, put your hand, raise your hand, right hand of fellowship towards him. And we're just going to pray. Um, we're just going to pray that um, God would just use him and, um, and touch us with his word this morning. Amen. So dear Heavenly Father, we just come before you right now, Father, just asking you to just, um, to just um, use Paul this morning, Father. He is willing. He is ready, Father. But now we're just waiting for you. Amen. We're just waiting for you, Father, to just speak through him, Father. Use him this morning, Father, to touch your people. Someone out here today needs a touch from you, a word from you, Father, a life-changing message that we can only get from your word. So we just ask that you just anoint Paul right now, Father, and use him today, Father. Um, again, he comes before you just ready to pour out what you've poured into him, Father. So hide him behind the cross, Father, and we just want to see you. Um, like Pastor said, we're not trying to hear from Paul this morning. We're trying to hear from you, Lord. So just use your servant, Father. Use him, Father. Prepare him, Father. And just, we're just praying for every heart that's out there who, again, is not focused on receiving the word, Father. We just ask you to prepare the hearts of the people so that we can hear this word this morning, Father. We just love you and we praise you in advance, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All Thank right. You. Amen. Can you hear me? That's awesome. 
I'm not used to a mic. I uh, just speak. I get kind of loud. So, if you all bear with me just a minute. Father God, I just thank you and praise you for another awesome day. This is a day, Lord, that you have given us. And uh, we make a conscious decision to rejoice, to be glad in this day. Father God, I ask that uh, you just touch the folks. I yield myself, I surrender myself to you, Father God. There be none of me in all of you, Father God. I yield my face to you, Father God, that you would speak in Jesus' awesome name. Well, we're going to start with... mics, man. We're going to start in Psalms 23. It's a very familiar passage. Lots of folks pray this. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runs over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Verse I want to focus on is 5. More specifically, 5a. We sang the song, Come to the Table. 5a says, You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. I just want to share a few ver- a few definitions here. I want to lay some groundwork for what this is. The word prepare means arrange, set or put or lay in order, set in array, order, ordain. That's what the word prepare means. The word table, this is awesome, the king's table, sacred usage. In the presence of my enemies is to bind, be in distress, cause distress, be bound. Enemies, adversaries, foe, enemy, oppressor. And a lot of times, folks, it's us. We're our own worst enemy. We're our own worst foe or adversary. We get in the way of ourselves from what God has for us. You could put all of those definitions, you drop all those definitions in, and this is kind of what it would sound like. Father has set in order his table for our sacred use, all that he has ordained for us since before the foundation of the earth. Not only that, but he has bound up our oppressor and causes him to stress while we enjoy the things of which he has laid out for us put all those definitions in there. That's kind of what it would sound like. So, forgive me as we do these notes. I'm not used to doing notes. I just write my scriptures and I go. But, we're doing a new thing. So, one of the things the Father has set out for us, that he wants us to enjoy, he's ordained it, he wants us to live in this. That's forgiveness. Forgiveness. So we're going to look at a few verses to start with, and the first one is Acts 26, 18. To open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Ephesians 1, 7, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. In Colossians 1, 14, 
in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin. So we can see by the scriptures that this is something that he wants for us. Okay, we're coming up into Easter. He was beaten brutally beyond anything you can imagine. This one? Awesome. Cool deal. So anyway, we can see through the scriptures that this is something that he wants for us. He bled and he died. He rose again. This is something that he wants for us. And he wants us to live in it. Live in it. And that sometimes is pretty difficult. Let's, the, the definition of forgiveness is release from bondage or imprisonment, pardon of sins, and this here is like really cool. Check this out. It says, letting them go as if they had never been committed. Remember that phrase. Letting them go as if they had never been committed. Remission of the penalty. Now, I want to talk about the word sin a little bit. We kind of get, let me, let me do the definition. When you understand the definition of sin, you get an idea and the feeling and the sense of the all-inclusiveness of this word. In, Acts, in the Acts verse and in Colossians, the meaning is the same, and it is to miss the mark, to miss or wander from the path of uprightness and honor, to do or go wrong, to wander from the law of God, violate God's law, sin, in which there is done wrong, sin, an offense, a violation of the divine law in thought or act. And in the Ephesians verse, it's just a little different, very similar though, a lapse or deviation from the truth or uprightness. So what mark are we missing? What path are we wandering from? What law are we violating? Or what truth are we deviating from? Right here, the Bible, it's all in there, okay? We miss the mark a lot of times. I miss the mark on a continual basis, praise God and stomp on the devil, and Jesus still loves me regardless of that. He knows me, like the song says, he fully knows me, fully knows me, and all my stuff but he still loves me, and he still forgives me. Same with y'all. Now, let's look at uh, Matthew 6. I'm going to go through the whole thing. I'm going to focus on a couple of verses in this here. Matthew 6, 9 through 15. Because remember, he wants us to live in and to walk in and enjoy forgiveness. And this is what the word says. Now, everybody does this. I mean, everybody does the Lord's Prayer. Okay, the Lord's Prayer is, I mean, everywhere you go, a, a, everywhere, everywhere, everybody does the Lord's Prayer. Okay? I think they stop short, though, and I'll discuss that. Matthew 6, 19 through 15. After this manner, therefore, ye pray. Oh, I'm in the King James. Did you hear that? Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth, as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Let me read that again. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And let us not, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But I really, 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 really like the big buts in God's word. Because this is a big one. Very important that y'all pay attention to those buts in the word of God. Because he's fixing to say something. And what he's fixing to say here, a lot of people don't want to hear. They don't want to hear this. But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither 
will your father forgive yours? People, they, they do the Lord's Prayer and they stop at 13. They don't go to 14. They don't go to 15. Now, I'm going to go back up to 12 because there's, a little, there's another little word. There, there's little words in the Word of God that we really, really need to pay attention to. And this little word is, forgive us our debts as. Folks read through that and they just blow over it. They just, Woof. as. Well, this is the definition of that word. In the same manner with or in which, in proportion to, to the extent or the degree in which. So let's read that. And forgive us our debts to the extent or the degree in which I forgive. So here's a question. Would you rather have God forgive you the way he wants to forgive you, or do you want him to forgive the way you forgive? That's a big difference there. Huge, huge difference. And most folks, like I say, they just pass that over. They just blow through that as, as it's, it really doesn't. It's important that we not only dig into the word, but we pay attention to, the, to what the words mean. Okay? Now, 14 and 15. I want to point out here, God's love and his salvation are absolutely unconditional. Absolutely unconditional. There's not one stinking thing that I can do to earn it. Okay? It's absolutely unconditional, and so much so that we can't even wrap our heads around that word unconditional. We don't have a clue when it comes to that. Fathers and mothers, your parents, you're, you're as close as you're going to get to understanding that word when it comes to your kids. But even that, we're not even close. Unconditional. Now, in order to stay in his blessings and in his will, in order to stay in his blessings and in his will, <laughs> we must take a look at 14 and 15. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your, forgot, your Father forgive you. Very important that we eyeball that. Now there's two groups of people here that he's talking about in these two verses. There's two folks, that, two type of people. Okay, there's y'all. Everybody, in other words. Okay, he doesn't, he, he's not selective when he, when he says that. In other words, you don't get to pick and choose who it is you're going to forgive. Okay? There's two groups that he's talking about. And he's bringing it very plainly, very clear. He's bringing it very up in your face. Again, we don't want to hear it, but it's still there. Now, the other group of people, which is a very, very important group of people, is yourself. I have to forgive myself. Now, when I was growing up, I was a real bonehead. As, as you can all tell, I mean, there's residual bonehead as you get to know me, right? But I still, there, I, was, I, was, I was rough. The things that I did to my kids, the things that I did to my exes, I was brutal. And I was a tremendous drunk. And you add in all of the anger and all of the stuff that I had going on, and you add a couple of kegs, I was mean. Okay, the things that I have done to my kids, the things that I've done to my exes, I had to forgive myself. And it took a long time. It took a long time. I was walking with God. I was living with God. I was... I, I accepted Christ. I came to Christ. I got, I, I received, I, his forgiveness was there. And he loved me. And I felt it and I knew it. But I was also running upside a wall. I was running upside a wall. I, because all that stuff kept coming. The thing that forgiveness, unforgiveness, whether it's to others or to you, will bring is bitterness. And it brings it to you. I didn't like Paul. Paul sucked. 
Here's how, here's how Paul liked Paul. I would go into the bar and I would find the biggest guy I could find. And I mean the biggest dude. And I'd smack him upside the jaw. Just, burn. And then he'd kick my can all over the bar. But I couldn't beat myself up the way I felt I needed to beat myself up. So I'd beat somebody and he'd whoop my can. And then I could look in the mirror in the morning and boy, oh boy, boy, I didn't deserve all that. I hated Paul. Paul was no good. And you know what? I know to this day that apart from Christ, I am still that guy. In Christ, I am a new creation. And I declare that all the time. I don't do positive self-affirmations. I don't do those. And the reason I don't do those is because that's trying to convince my brain that something's true that isn't true. I will do a declaration. That is an intentional statement of fact that my status has changed. Period. It's changed. I am not the old man. I am the new man. And when you're declaring the word of God, that's what you're saying. Your status has changed. That other stuff is no longer. You are the new creation. And I hated Paul, but I had to get to that place. I had to get on my face to forgive Paul. There's stuff that you guys have done. I'm not pointing fingers. I'm telling you straight up. The Word of God says this. It says that narrows the road and, and, and narrows that gate. He was talking to the church when he was saying that. So what I'm saying is, you all in here, you got this stuff going on. And in order to, stay, to, to, to experience the fullness of Christ's walk, to experience the fullness of the kingdom of God that has come to pass right here, right now, let your kingdom come here on earth as it is in heaven. It's here. It's right now. But we don't enjoy the fullness of it because we're holding unforgiveness to ourselves. The peace, the joy, the goodness, the kindness, the compassion. We want to experience the fullness of it and we have to forgive ourselves to do so. Have to. He did it. And now, now here's, here's, when I got to that place, somebody posed this to me, and this really shook me to the cords of my being. When he said, when you're holding unforgiveness towards yourself, Paul, you know what you're saying? What Christ did on the cross wasn't quite good enough for you. It's good enough for everybody else, but it wasn't quite good enough for you. That's a bad place to be. That's a dangerous place to be. Forgive yourselves. Whatever it is, shame is some is, is is that attacks who you are. Guilt is what you've done. And when you un, hold unforgiveness towards yourself, a lot of the times it has to do with the shame. I didn't understand who I was. I am a blood-bought, spirit-filled child of the Most High God. I am blessed in the city, blessed in the country, blessed my going out. Praise God, stomp on the devil. I am blessed. Amen. That's who I am. That is the new creation that he said that I am. Once I started to understand that, and I understood that I was putting myself in a place that I should not be, okay, Lord, I'm going to forgive. And I'll get into a little bit more about what forgiveness is and what forgiveness isn't. We're going to do that right now. You all know that forgiveness is not a feeling. It's not an emotion. It absolutely is not an emotion. I didn't feel like forgiving Paul. And you know what? I didn't feel like forgiving my dad. I didn't feel like forgiving my stepmom. I didn't feel like forgiving my brother. I didn't feel like forgiving none of those folks. It is not in an emotion. And when you say stuff like, man, I just don't, I don't feel like, I don't feel like forgiving them. Man, it's not an emotion. You will never feel like forgiving. You will never feel like forgiving. Forgiveness doesn't mean reconciliation either. 
it does not mean that I'm going to put myself back in a position to be hurt again. Yeah. Forgiveness, it, it doesn't mean toleration either. Because I forgive doesn't mean I'm going to put myself back there. Forgive doesn't mean I'm going to tolerate the abuse. I'm going to tolerate all of that. Forgiveness is for me. Forgiveness is for you. I want to experience the fullness of what God has for me. And in order for me to do that, I have to forgive. Not only myself, I have to forgive anybody and everybody that's hurt me. Anybody and everybody. There was a place in time, not too long ago, 2012, as a matter of fact, I found my, my brother's picture going through stuff, looking for stuff for taxes. It's amazing what you find when you're looking for stuff for taxes. Anyway, my dad passed away in 2012. Now, he was five minutes away in the hospital, five minutes from my house. He'd been there for a week, dying. My stepmother was there, and my oldest brother was there. Nobody contacted me. Nobody contacted the rest of my family. I get a phone call one day at the mission. This is about a year after I started, something like that. From my mom, <laughs> who had divorced my dad 20 years prior, telling me that my dad had passed away. And she says, don't bother going up there because he's already cremated. She says, your brother was there, so he, he was able to say goodbye. Let me tell you, folks. Some of you have heard me say this. Practice makes permanent. Practice does not make perfect. Practice makes permanent. It becomes second nature. And I had been practicing the principle of not only forgiving myself, but forgiving all those around me. And when you get married, you get that opportunity to do so quickly. All the time. Okay? And I'd been practicing this principle. I'd also been practicing the principle of going to brothers. That's why it's important, men, that, that you get on that men's Bible study. And you get with men and start building relationships with them. I got with a brother right away. And he prayed with me and I came home. Now, remember I told you I was a guy that was full of anger. Mean. If I could have got a hold of my brother at that point in time, I would have beat him within an inch of his life. I'd have, I'd have whooped him big. And if I could have got a hold of my stepmother, I'd have just beat her until she was dead. That's how angry I was. I was upset. They got to say goodbye to dad. They got to see dad. They got to say goodbye to him. Didn't do that with me. Well, about two hours in, while I'm stomping around out in my, my yard, I got about two acres, and I have a lot of room to stomp, and I stomped a lot. That still small voice back there said, you need to forgive, Paul. Now, let me tell you, I did not feel like forgiving. <laughs> I did not want to forgive. But the Word of God, the, the thing that I ascribe to, the thing that I strive every day to follow and to be obedient to and to live out, that still small voice said, forgive. I said, you're right, Father, I forgive. Now, forgiveness is an act of your will. It is an act of your will. It is a conscious decision to agree with God's word and then to do it. And to do it, you need to say it. Your thoughts will never command your thoughts. Only the spoken word will command those thoughts. Because wrapping around in my head were a whole lot of things that weren't the word. Wrapping around in my head were a lot of stuff that, well, I could be in prison. <laughs> if I'd have just let it wrap. So I forgave. And after I forgave, about a day later, I called my brother. 
said, hey, man, I love you. When's the funeral? He said, well, we're not going to have one. I said, what? We're not going to have one. Well, now, I rode around out in the oil field for 20 years with my dad, and I knew exactly what songs he wanted played at his funeral. I knew what verses he wanted said at his burn, at his funeral. Now they're telling me they ain't going to have one. Well, again, guess what? I get to, for, I get to forgive again. Remember, it don't just because you do it one time ain't going to happen. Because, see, the chump knows. He knows your weaknesses. Do you know your weaknesses? We all go on our strengths. We know our strengths, but we don't deal with our weaknesses. And the chump knows our weaknesses, and he's going to come at him. He's going to come at him when you're at your lowest. We are cyclical beings. Everything in God's world happens in cycles. Spring, fall, summer, winter, spring, fall, okay? Same with us. We go in cycles. And he knows when you're at your lowest, and he's going to come at you. Well, I had to forgive, and I did. I forgave again. But I didn't stop because I knew my dad wanted a funeral. (laughs) So I called his pastor, and his pastor was like, praise God, yes, we get to do it. Because he couldn't do nothing until a family member stepped up. So we had the opportunity to put together a funeral in Conrad. Remember, I told you I was a real bonehead. I was a real bonehead, man. Everybody in Conrad, you go there right now, they'll even tell you I was a bonehead. I got, as a matter of fact, I got a, there's a bench right there at the light in Conrad. I don't know how many you've been to Conrad. There's one street light, and right there is a bench. It's named the Bum Bench. Because that's where I sat most of the time. Okay? I was a real bonehead. Okay? And everybody in town knows me. I was on a first-name basis with the judge and all of the cops. When they called the cops on me, they brought three and four. They didn't just come one. I was a bonehead. Well, a lot of people from Conrad were at that funeral. And I got the opportunity because I forgave my stepmother and I forgave my brother. I got the opportunity in that moment to say I'm sorry to the folks in Conrad and to ask them to forgive me. And I also had the opportunity to address my family and apologize to them and ask them to forgive me and to tell them that I forgive them. Doesn't sound like a whole lot. Where's your point, Paul? Well, the point is, three months later, my oldest brother passed away. And if I wouldn't have done what I did, If I wouldn't have been obedient to the word of God, I would be regretting that right now. I don't have to regret it because I was able to forgive him. I was able to continue building my relationship with him. Three months after that, my mom passed away. Forgiveness, folks. If you don't forgive, you will build bitterness. You see... There's this thing I call T-ACT, T-E-A-A-C-T. Thought triggers an emotion, triggers an attitude, and out of that attitude, you're going to act, and from that action, you're going to get a consequence, and that happens today, every day, all day long. The thought had to come, forgive Paul, and the emotion that come with that was a peace. The attitude was, yes, Lord. The action was verbally calling and apologizing or asking him to, or telling him that I forgave him and telling him that I love him. The consequence was, guess what? I got to build a relationship with those folks before they passed away. It happens just that way. Just that way. When you get a root of bitterness, it's generally because of unforgiveness. You you don't want to live that way. There's folks in here right now that have that going on. There's folks online that have that going on. A root of bitterness. Now, when you forgive folks, okay, guess what the chump's going to do? The chump is going to bring a thought to you. Again, T-act. He's going to bring a thought to you. 
And if you don't do what the Word says, because the Word has a process for this, if you don't do what the Word says, you're going to get, you're going to, you're going to, well, I see there, it don't work. The game is don't work. He's going to bring a thought to you, and if you don't take that thought captive to the obedience of Christ, immediately, immediately, he's going to wrap around in your head and he's going to beat you silly with it until you develop an attitude. And that attitude is, you know what? I just ain't ever going to do nothing with them. They, see them? They ain't ever going to change. They, 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 they. And then you're going to have actions out of that. You're going to... That's the way we have... That's the way we work. And then you get, once you get to that place, you have put a judgment on them. When you hold unforgiveness towards folks, you're placing a judgment on them. them they just ain't worth my time. So when you forgive folks, it's imperative that you do the work and you release them from the judgments that you've placed on them. You do the work. Father, I forgive them. And I release them from the judgments that I place on them. Father, forgive me for placing judgment. Now when the chump comes back with a thought, nope, in Jesus' name, I have set them free. If you got a problem with that, you go talk to them. I, 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 I've forgiven them. I'm free from that. I don't have none of that. And when you do that, when you declare the truth of God's word over this situation, his peace comes in. And now when you see them, you don't have a whole lot of, you still can visit with them. You can talk to them. You can have a relationship with them. Because the relationship is more important than the issue was. Thought, emotion, attitude, action, consequence. Take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. Every thought. I'm going to do a little, little thing because, see, when I, when I first come to Christ, I, I what, are you, what are you talking about, take every thought captive? How do you do that? I can't reach in my head and do that. I'm kind of a literal dude. I need to have something to grab a hold of. So, Pastor, when I say go, please start counting to 100 in your mind, please. Go. Say your, loud, say your name out loud right now. Did you notice the counting stopped? Just, just, it, that's the way you take thoughts captive. That's how you stop them from wrapping around in your head. No, in Jesus' name. You know, when I, when I start, first started quitting drinking, <laughs> man, I was, one day I was in the Walmart and I was looking at cereal. I like cereal. Lori was telling me last night, and I don't know, I can't wrap my head around this. They're, they're making a healthy cat and crunch. I, she was telling me this while I was eating a big bowl of crunch berries last night. But anyway, I'm looking at cereal, and I get this thought beer would be great. Take every thought captive. And, and nobody had told me this. No, the Lord is who told me this. And, he, and, he, and he, it was right then in that moment. No. In Jesus' name, I'm free. Jesus is the truth that I know, and he has set me free. And I am free. Not just free, I'm free indeed. And that is the only word of God that I knew at that time. And you know what? Today, I'm free. 100%. One hundred percent. So when you're trying to forgive folks, and I know some of you have had terrible, terrible times. There's there's stuff that has happened that should never have happened. Never have happened. Listen to the word that says forgive. Forgive. It's an act of your will. Simply do it. Forgive those who have hurt you. Forgive yourself. Forgive yourself. Don't live with that shame no more. There's another song that says, shame, check it at the door. You are a son and a daughter of the Most High. You are bought with a price. You are 
forgiven. You are loved. You're above and not beneath. You're the head and not the tail. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. A holy generation chosen. That's what your Father in heaven says about you. It's what he says about you. Not the lies. First lady was telling us, saying that. Don't listen to the lies no more. The world says you're dirty. Daddy says you're white as snow. The world says you're unforgivable. Your daddy says you are forgiven. 100%. Forgive those that have hurt you. Let it go. Give it to Christ. The burden removing, yoke destroying power of God. And He will destroy that thing off of your life. And the chump ain't ever going to be able to put it back together. He loves you with an everlasting love. He knew you before the foundations of the earth. You were fearfully and wonderfully made. Is there anybody you need to forgive? Include yourself in that. Is there anybody you need to forgive? I'm going to ask you to come forward. Pastor Andre, First Lady, Don, Miss Barbara, come forward. Come forward. Come up and pray. Come to the altar. For those of you who are online, get on your knees right now. Forgive. 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 Come forward. Come forward. The Lord wants to meet with you right here, right now. He wants you to experience that. I'm just sensing there's some more. When you come forward and pray with the team up here, where two or three are gathered, there's something about having a brother or sister lay hands on you as you release these things. Come forward. I'm going to bring an invite to meet Jesus. Jesus is right here and he's waiting. If you have never received Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, not just Savior, Lord and Savior, I want you to raise your hand. Now, I'm not going to ask that we bow our heads because Jesus died on that cross with every eyeball looking at him. There's no undercover Christian stuff here. Do it in front of everybody. If you have, want to receive Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, or you have walked away and you're not walking like you should, raise your hand. For those of you who are watching online, right there where you're at, ask Christ into your life. Is there anybody that wants to receive or rededicate? Is there anybody out here that would like to join Living Grace Church as your home fellowship? Anybody? All right.
Let's pray. Father God, we just praise you and we thank you for another beautiful, beautiful time. I thank you, Father God, that your word accomplishes the thing that it was sent out to do, that it will not return void. I thank you, Father God, that your word is a double-edged sword that cuts to the bone and the marrow. It's a two-mouth sword. Your word coming in and your word coming out our mouth cuts through the stuff. And I thank you for that. Father, as everybody leaves today, Lord, Holy Spirit, I ask that you would just continue to minister to them. I ask, Holy Spirit, that you would just bring to mind the things that they need to bring to you. Those that they need to forgive. Holy Spirit, help them as they go forward to be able to forgive quickly, knowing that it's, this, it's an act of obedience to your word, that it is an act of your, their will, and that we need to be doing it quickly so that we can continue to experience the fullness of your kingdom in our lives. I thank you, Father God. In Jesus' awesome name, amen. Amen.